I use pressure treated 2x6s for the sill plates. I cut them to length and test fit them on the grade beam before framing the wall. Here I'm drilling holes for the anchor bolts. Once I had the sill plates down and confirmed everything was square, I removed the sills and temporarily attached the sill plates to their corresponding top plates to mark the stud locations. Framing the back wall is easy as there is no windows or other openings. I'm using 2x6 studs on 16 inch center centers. I saw one living roof build where they put their studs on 12 inch centers. I thought it was a little overkill as, two by, as a 2x6 stud can support a lot of weight. However, a stud is susceptible to bending or buckling under load. To mitigate bend, I'll attach plywood sheathing to the exterior. I'll also infill the stud bays with cob to further stiffen the stud. The front wall was more complex, incorporating door and window openings. 2 by 8 concrete form boards worked well to prop up one end of the wall as I assembled it. I used a combination of nails and screws. I like to use screws on the window sills because when we pack the front wall with light clay straw, we can easily remove the sills temporarily to get better access to the wall cavity. The window and door headers are 2 by 8s fastened together. I'll add a third 2 by 8 to each header after the wall is raised. The front wall is significantly heavier than the back wall, so I called in some extra reinforcements to raise it. Okay. It needs to go this way. It has to go this way. Yep, go no more, no more, no more. Right, uh, here more. This one. Per the advice of my neighbor, I built the side walls in place rather than on the ground. I put down the sill plate and secured the end studs to the back and front walls followed by the top plate. Then I was able to attach all the intermediary, intermediary studs to the top plate and tunneling into the sill plate. The back and side walls are sheathed in 3 quarter inch ground contact plywood. I fasten the plywood down every foot with a combination of screws and nails. The 4 by sheets are heavy so I made a couple little temporary supports to keep the higher pieces in place until I was able to get a few screws in. The front wall is the only non-berm side and I'm planning to infill it with light clay straw. As light clay straw isn't as resistant to heat transfer as other insulation materials, it really benefits from a wall slightly thicker than a 5.5 inch 2x6. So I built a double wall, making the front wall a total of 10.5 inches thick. Finished out with plaster will be close to a foot thick. Double walls are also nice because they prevent thermal bridging, where heat passes from the interior to the exterior via the studs. Double walls have a gap between the two walls that can be filled with insulation, stopping the effect. The cottage will have three 20-foot long continuous beams running the, across the structure and having a generous overhang. 
On both ends of the building there will be partial beams level with the wall top plate and supported by knee braces. Each beam consists of three 2x12 boards fastened together. I built each continuous beam on the wall rather than trying to do it on the ground and lift the complete beam into place. I made some scaffolding from form boards on one end of the building and moved up the 2x12s individually. Then I proceeded to glue, clamp, screw, and nail the pieces together. I fastened the two outer beams. I fastened the two outer continuous beams to the wall top plate with heavy duty brackets and lag screws. The middle beam sits 12 inches higher than the top plate. I built a knee wall between the two outer beams and used a farm jack to hoist the middle beam into position. I would have filmed the operation, but I, th I didn't think it was going to work. For the partial beams on the outside edges, I created a pocket and wall framing and keyed the partial beam to fit. The first one went up smoothly, so I took a time lapse the second one, which didn't go so smoothly. First, I attached the knee brace to support the beam while I slid it in place. When it didn't quite fit, I disassembled and removed parts of the wall until it did. Then I spent a while tinkering with the alignment and adjusting the level by moving the beam and knee brace up and down with the, knee, with the jack. In retrospect, I think it would have been better to run a continuous beam. The span between the beams is less than 5 feet, so I calculated that 2x6 rafters on 16 inch centers would be fine for a lightweight living roof. So I had 30 rafters to make, each with 3 bird's mouth cuts. I got an assembly line going after a while. I would process 4 2x6s at a time, crowning them, clamping them together, and then making measurement marks for all of them at the same time. Then I would draw out the bird's mouth joint for each board and then cut the 4 consecutively. My construction project seemed to really slow down once I leave the ground. I marked out rafter locations on each beam and on the outside wall. Paul came out to help me put up the rafters. I didn't count for the width of the wall sheathing with my bird mouth cut, so he's notching out where each rafter sits. We worked our way from the front of the cottage to the back using hurricane ties in the top beam in the wall and toenailing the rafter to the middle beam. Later I put in blocking between the rafters on the top beam in the wall and 2x6 subfacia on the rafter tails. The roof sheathing, like the wall sheathing, is 3 quarter inch ground contact plywood and is still very heavy. To get it, get it on the roof, I used a ladder as a ramp. I managed to get about three full panels up my own, and then fortunately Paul showed up to help with the rest. I attached scrap boards to the subfacia to keep the first run of plywood from sliding off. We fastened the sheathing to the rafters with two inch screws. 
There's also one eighth inch expansion gap between each sheet, although with the living roof, I don't know how necessary that will be. Excess plywood was cut off in, in place. The last step was putting roof underlayment on to provide some protection until the roof is finished. I used nails with caps and drip edge as, under, as the underlayment may be left exposed for a while. Alright, so the structural framing on the cottage is, is finished. As well, exterior frame. There's still some interior walls to do, but we'll we'll touch on those a little later. So come up to the shed. I mean, the sorry, the cottage. First thing you notice is these pretty substantial beams. So for these, I used three two by twelves stacked together, and the three in the center are continuous. They run all the way through the building, and they're roughly four and a half feet apart. So these ones on the ends aren't continuous, that's why I need these knee braces here. Okay, so this front wall, non-bermed wall, will be infilled with light clay straw. So to prevent thermal bridging and to give the wall a little more depth, I uh, built a double stud wall. So you can see the inside is 2x6, and that's what holds all the weight. Then I also built a second, second wall from 2x4s, it's non-structural. So you can see up here at the top, see that but the uh, the beams aren't actually resting on the outside of two by four wall you see it there I sort of sanded these back a little bit the wall is also slightly lower I mean sorry the exterior wall is actually slightly lower so that there's no weight on the on the uh, exterior wall so a couple features here Because I staggered my studs between this exterior wall and the actual structural wall. That way I don't need thermal bridging. It also gives a good mechanical key for a light clay straw to fit in here and not fall, fall out of the wall. So the, the exterior wall is tied to the, the interior one with these little pieces of uh, plywood at various parts all along the top. The exterior wall is also bolted down to the, uh, the foundation too. Right here. So the other three sides when you firmed up, so they have uh, three-quarter inch ground contact plywood on. We'll talk about how I'm going to waterproof these a little bit in a future video. And these braces are just temporary. Once this is burned up, I will put a uh, more permanent support for this in. And for the roof right now, I just put a uh, temporary layer of underlayment. Just give me a little breathing room for rains again before I'm able to put the, uh, the roof on.
Oh yeah, one last thing. So in addition to these two windows, so you got two 36 by 48 windows there, a 32 by 18 here. We'll also have two more right along the roof line. These will be awning windows to help fit hot air that gets up to the ceiling.